Hello guys, this is going to be video four. Um, before I get started, I would just like to put out a disclaimer. Again, I'm just a guy on YouTube uh, sharing some opinions on what I feel is a great way to um, map out your day with food. Uh, there's a million different diet plans that are out there. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say this is the end all be all, um, but I would like to just show you how to create a map to your day. Okay, so again, this, you know, if you're going to embark on this, it is strongly recommended you see a doctor first, do a good, get a good physical done. Uh, just make sure you're, you know, the, nothing to be concerned with before you embark on this journey. Um, again, what I want to do is the name implies for the channel is Practical Weight Loss with Billy. This is just practical. I'm just going to show you how I would eat through the day, but I'll also show you how I would eat if I was female. This way you get a perspective of two different styles of eating. Um, I am a big believer in eating and eating often. And what's so funny is now all this, uh, you know, you see all these different things out there. Oh, uh, you should eat once or twice a day, fast all day long. And, and I mean, intermittent fasting does have some, some amazing health benefits. And in a, the future video, I will discuss intermittent fasting. And I'm a fan of intermittent fasting. I am not a fan of doing it for the rest of my life because like I said, what I care about is the loss of body fat only while preserving muscle mass. And so I like food and I'm sure you like food. So I don't want to go, you know, 16, 18 hours every single day not eating and I get one giant meal. It's, I, I don't enjoy that. And so uh, I am a fan of eating and eating every couple of hours. I alluded to it in the other video. Uh, it's funny because some people say, or some scientific studies have said, you know, eating frequently doesn't speed up the metabolism. And I don't agree with that at all. I mean, you expend energy, consuming energy, meaning you utilize um, uh, or burn rather many calories just trying to digest and process your food. Um, I'm living proof. Like I said, I'm going to be 50 years old this year. I've been able to stay lean my whole life. Uh, I feel great. I'm strong. I have energy. And I've eaten every couple of hours um, pretty much every single day for the last, yeah, you know, like I said, I'm almost 50, so most of my life. So what I want to do is today I'm just going to give you basically the breakdown of how I would eat um, in a typical day. I do not count calories. Um, I'm not suggesting you don't have to do that. Uh, I do like my fitness pal. I think it's a great way to log your food and get a good baseline. And if you find you're eating, you know, 16, 1800 calories and you're losing a half pound to two pounds a week, then that's the sweet spot. That caloric intake for you works. Um, if you find you're eating that many calories and there's absolutely no drop in your weight, uh, I would actually say, let's go up a little bit in your calories. Maybe you're too low. Um, but again, I, I don't want you spending your entire life counting every single calorie, food journaling, fit bedding, doing all this other stuff. Because again, I, I wanted this to be practical. I wanted this to be simple. Okay. So I'm going to show you basically step-by-step step how I would eat in a day and how I recommend most people, um, if they're wanting to follow this type of protocol, how they would eat in a day. Um, it's a five to six meal a day eating plan. And if you don't want to do snacks, it's not, I'm not going to say you have to do them. You can take them out if they don't work in your, in your uh, busy schedule. Um, but that brings me to the first point, which is when you're embarking upon this, we have got to not let the day win. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, just think about yourself for a second. Do you have a map for your day? Do you know roughly what you're going to eat and when you're going to eat it? Uh, if you're like most people, the answer is no. You know, the day kind of dictates when you're going to eat and what you're going to eat or what you have time for. Well, that, that ends here and now. Uh, it doesn't mean you're always going to be perfect at this. I don't want you to be perfect. But what it does mean is you at least now have a schedule, a map, right? I am busy. I mean, I work 75, 80 hours a week, every single week, but I still come first, right? I still make sure that I have my food with me, or if I don't have my food with me, I have a map of what and where I can eat so that I don't let the day, oh, sorry, I was too busy, I just can't eat. Those days are over. If you're gonna do this right, you can't do that. You're gonna keep side, you know, sidelining yourself doing it that way. You come first, okay? Uh, you might have to do some food prep or have some escape plans. So in, in future videos, I'm going to show you how I can eat at a McDonald's or how I can eat at a, a, a Boston Market or a Subway or a, you know, how do I get rotisserie chicken at a local grocery store? I want to show you again, practical, you know, modalities, if you will, to deal with the every day today. Because not every day is perfect and not every day is easy, right? Some days are just chaos, right? But I still want you to come first, okay? So I want to show you how to do this. We're gonna start with breakfast first. Now let's talk about that. What does that word mean? Breakfast, you're breaking a fast. Uh, you've been sleeping for a good six to eight hours. You haven't eaten. You've been fasting, okay? Um, and what's interesting and what I find is funny is 
you know, a lot. some of the research that's come up today kind of goes completely against what I was taught when I finished my master's degree back in 97. And I know things evolve and change, but the human body really hasn't changed. So it almost makes you feel like some of the stuff that's come out uh, is trying to disprove everything back in the day. But what's odd is, well, well shoot, I got my body fat down to 3.2% body fat doing what I'm gonna show you today. So it does work. Uh, and in my opinion, it always will work. Um, and so I wanna kind of map that out for you and, and show you realistically how to eat enough so that you feel satiated, how to eat enough so we're feeding muscle tissue, and how to eat enough so we're burning body fat. So let's get started. We're gonna start with breakfast first, like I alluded to before, breakfast, breaking a fast. We've been fasting. And so research shows four hours into sleep, you go into what's called a negative nitrogen balance. Without getting too technical here, that's not a good thing. We wanna maintain a positive nitrogen balance. Just like writing checks. If I write checks, I go into the negative, I'm bouncing checks. Well, if I go into what's called a negative nitrogen balance, that basically means I'm not consuming enough protein to offset what I'm breaking down. I'm running out of nitrogen. And so you will actually, or in theory, you could lose some muscle tissues. And I don't want that to happen. So my breakfast, I'm not starting off the day with a, a toaster strudel and I'm hitting the road, right? I want a more balanced breakfast and I want a bigger breakfast. When I wake up in the morning, I'm starving, right? I'm not just gonna eat a pretzel stick and call it a day. I want a balanced breakfast, okay? So let me show you here. I'm gonna map it out and don't be jealous of my handwriting. It's gonna be stellar. Uh, actually, it's horrible handwriting, but nonetheless, it'll get the point across, all right? Okay, so let me go ahead and write this out for you. Okay, let's discuss breakfast, all right? So the way I choose to eat my breakfast, okay? I always start off the day, and I'm gonna give you some examples here, right? But I start off the day with a protein choice, uh, two to three eggs. Uh, for people who are concerned about cholesterol, we can make this a modification. It could be one to two whole eggs and then some egg whites. Uh, these eggs can be prepared any way you'd like, scrambled, hard boiled, sunny side up. If you're not an egg eater, uh, but we still want protein. Another option would be uh, some type of a protein shake. Okay, so if you don't want to eat any eggs, um, that is an option. Okay, anytime you see the protein, a shake can definitely be implemented in, in its place. All right. I also want a lean meat, approximately two ounces worth. That could be some lean turkey bacon, uh, could be a quality lean piece of steak. Um, could be just some turkey sausage, some regular bacon from time to time. I don't have issues with bacon. I know some people have vilified bacon, but again, I, I don't have an issue with that in moderation, okay? Uh, and here, obviously, we're moderating it. We're not doing a lot here. Two ounces, probably about two pieces. Again, it depends on the thickness of the bacon. Then I also like a carbohydrate choice, okay? Uh, and I'm giving you some options here. It could be a cup of oatmeal. Uh, you could use a piece of whole wheat toast or some Ezekiel bread if you really want to do this right, or a high quality cup of an all brand cereal, something like that, um, Special K, anything like that. But again, I want you to pick one carbohydrate choice. And then finally, a small piece of fruit. Okay, so I mean, we've got quite a bit here, right? Now, we can take this, 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 this template, if you will, and we can really get creative with this. So like the two to three eggs could be scrambled, could be sunny side up. All condiments are fine. You can use seasoning, spices, saute some mushrooms, onions, peppers. I could turn those eggs into an omelet. The lean meat that I've prepared, I can also throw into that omelet. Um, right here where you see the carbohydrate. For example, if I'm doing the oatmeal, I could do some berries. Berries are wonderful. I can add that to the oatmeal. So again, I, I have this template here, but I can get creative with this. And what's interesting is, you know, if I'm on vacation, I can get this anywhere. I can go to any restaurant. I can get eggs prepared. They're always going to have some type of a, a, a meat choice. I can do an oatmeal or a whole wheat toast or a quality cereal. And they usually have some type of fruit plate. Okay. So, you know, this is just, just an example of how I would eat uh, through a day. Okay, that would be my breakfast. Now, let's talk about an escape plan here, all right? So you're real busy. What do you do if you don't have time for breakfast? Well, what I don't do is miss my meal, unless I'm intermittent fasting, but my other choice is I utilize a meal replacement shake, okay? Um, it, or also known as an MRP. But I'll do a meal replacement shake when I cannot eat this way. So I have options. If I can eat, great. If I can't, I drink. But either way, my day, doesn't get started within an hour of me waking up without some type of balance of some healthy protein and some carbohydrates, okay? Now, if I'm ketoing, all right, then obviously some of these choices will disappear and some new ones will have been replaced. And I'm gonna show you that in a future video. What I'm trying to do today is just map out a basic skeleton of how I eat in a day, 
Okay? And again, I can't come out and say, this is how you should eat. I can get in a lot of trouble for that. So what I'm doing is just showing an example of how I would eat. And you can, you can kind of incorporate some of these choices into your um, eating schedule. I just don't miss. Okay? That's the key is I just don't miss. All right? Uh, and again, I try to do breakfast within an hour of waking up unless I am working out in the morning. Now, if I work out in the morning, I do like working out in a fasted state. Um, I might consume some BCAAs, which stand for brain sheet amino acids, which help preserve muscle tissue. Uh, I'll consume a drink like that, or I may even use some type of a pre-workout uh, just because I do get up so early. A lot, sometimes I need a little extra energy kick. But if I am working out early, then breakfast would come after my workout. Okay? But this is an example of breakfast. Now, if I was female, all I would do, I would still eat this exact same meal, it's just I would shrink the portion sizes down. And that works out great if a husband and wife are trying to do this. So you're not preparing 15,000 different meals. But the one thing I failed to mention is I also try to figure out my time and I try to stay consistent with that time. Again, the only time it adjusts is if I'm working out in the morning and then breakfast will go a little later. But always remember, this kind of ebbs and flows. So if you get up early through the week, you may have a different breakfast time on your work week than you do in the weekend. If you wake up a little later in the weekend, fine. Within an hour or so of getting up, again, if you're not intermittent fasting, then you would slide this down. If you get up at 6 through the week, your breakfast might be around 7, 7.30. If you get up at 9 on the weekend, your breakfast might be around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Okay, but either way, I want you having breakfast. Okay. All right, uh, now it's time for the mid-morning snack, one of my favorites. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and discuss the morning snack, okay? For men, I'd like the snack to be approximately 250 calories. Again, if it's a larger individual, I recommend roughly 300 calories. I'm a smaller frame guy, so I err towards roughly 200 calories, okay? For women, I usually recommend between 150 and 200 calories for a snack. Um, I'm gonna give some examples here. Uh, you, there, I mean, it runs the gamut. I mean, you can prepare your own snacks. Uh, you can buy your snacks. I mean, how, whatever you want to do. But what my go-to, to be quite honest with you, is 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a protein shake uh, and some almonds, all right? And I figure out, depending on how much protein I'm using, will dictate how many almonds. So if I'm doing two scoops of protein, I won't have as many almonds. If I'm doing one scoop of protein, I will have more almonds. But that way, roughly, I keep my calories between 250 to approximately 300 at most, okay? Um, and again, for women, I like between 150 and 200 calories. Um, my other go-to if I don't do protein shakes and almonds, is there are a slew of really good protein bars out there. And that you got to be careful with, though, because there are some that are just inundated with sugar. So you, ha you do have to kind of keep an eye out for that. But there are some very, very reputable brands. The protein bar industry is a massive industry. And the bars of today are substantially better than they used to be. My go-to's, I really enjoy the Quest bars, I like the One bars, uh, Fit Crunch bars, Power Crunch bars. Again, those are my go-to's and I really enjoy them. Um, I also like tuna and crackers, all right? Or, uh, I'm, I know a lot of people are gonna enjoy this snack, but anchovies are great, especially if you're on a, a keto or a very low-carb diet, um, is another option. But again, I try to uh, utilize my snack. I want, it helps keep me a little full. And, and what's interesting is I've seen some of the, the, the guys get on YouTube and they're like, oh, the reason we don't recommend snacks is because it makes you hungry and, you, and you're going to want to be hungrier for, for more meals. And I disagree with that. If I eat breakfast and then I go all the way until lunch, I'm ravenous if I don't have a snack, okay? And so what I have found is by doing my mid-morning snacks, it keeps me more honest when it comes time to lunch. Guys, I could diet with the best of them. You know, I got the willpower of 10 people, but my weakness is when I go too long without food. Now I am starving, and guess what? My dieting skills are atrocious. Uh, it's a, You talk about being weak, and when I fall down, I fall down hard. And usually that's because I didn't eat uh, enough throughout the day. You know, my day did get away from me and maybe I missed a snack. So I disagree with those that say snacking leads to you eating more and more and more. No, what snacking does for me is not only does it keep my metabolism moving and I feel satiated when I get to my next meal, I don't gorge, all right? So I disagree with those people. Um, but anyway, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I do strongly recommend a snack. Now, one, one quick thing I was gonna say, if I wanna still kind of follow my schedule and say it is a Saturday, and instead of getting up real early and having my breakfast at 6 or 7, see, I do sleep in until about 9, um, and now breakfast is closer to 10. If I still want to kind of stay on the rest of my schedule like I do through the week, I'm, in that instance, I would probably skip my morning snack 
That way I allow two to three hours to, to basically elapse. Then that would lead me into lunchtime, okay? But otherwise, uh, through the week, I don't ever miss this snack. I think that snack is critical, all right? So uh, that's just my recommendation on snacks. These are the caloric recommendations. Again, these are recommendations. They're not the end-all be-all. I'm not saying it's this way or no way. But what's gonna be interesting is when I get into the keto aspect of all this, I'll show you how my, my snacks and everything change just a little bit. Uh, I make sure I incorporate plenty of fats, um, and we'll get into all that. But anyway, I just wanted to share this morning snack with you, uh, and we're gonna go to lunch next. Okay guys, now we're gonna discuss lunch, all right? And just like the name of my whole series, Practical Weight Loss with Billy, it doesn't get any easier than this, guys. Now, what I'm gonna show you is this is how, obviously, I eat as a male, okay? And I'll show you how I'd eat, because again, I have to be careful with recommendations, if I was a female, okay? I always start off with roughly six to eight ounces of meat, all right? I'm a meat eater, I want my protein. That could be anything. That could be chicken, it could be steak, hamburgers, pork chops, um, fish, uh, any fish goes. But again, I want roughly six to eight ounces of some type of meat, all right? I want a minimum of two cups of vegetables. Uh, you're never gonna hear me say, oh my gosh, you're eating way too many veggies. That just doesn't exist. Uh, obviously, the green leafy vegetables, the better. Uh, so this is where I'll incorporate salads, asparagus, broccoli, spinach, uh, or a combination of all of them. Again, there's no wrong answer when it comes to green vegetables as far as how much you're allowed to eat, okay? And then lastly is the fist-sized carbohydrate. Now this, what's neat with this is it kind of keeps you honest. Right? As a male, my fist is this size. If I was female, chances are my fist would be a little bit smaller, thereby allowing me to have the appropriate amount of carbohydrate. If I have a smaller fist, I'm generally gonna be a smaller person, I'm gonna have a little bit less carbohydrate. So again, I don't like uh, saying it's two thirds of a cup of this and three, four, I don't wanna be that way. Right? I'm just trying to give you a, a, a good idea of how to ascertain portion sizes, okay? So again, six to eight ounces of meat, two cups of vegetables, and a fist-sized carbohydrate. Now, one thing you have to understand, this is not what the body does, okay? The body doesn't go, all right, he just ate a salad, fat burners, let's engage. Oh my gosh, he just ate some french fries. <laughs> no more fat burning for this guy. That's not what happens, guys. So, we all get cravings, don't we? We sure do. I'm one of them, and I love french fries. I mean, I'll go to a bar fight for some french fries. I mean, I'll love some french fries. My point is this, how would I incorporate that here? How would I incorporate this if I was eating at a McDonald's? Do I eat at McDonald's from time to time? You bet I do, right? I like fast food, right? Do I eat all the time? Of course not. And some of you may be watching, what he eats me? Yes, I do, right? I'm not gonna go through my whole life living off of twigs and berries. You know, I enjoy going out to eat from time to time and sometimes out of necessity and speed, I will pull through a McDonald's or a Hardee's, but I make the right choices. So how do I incorporate that here? Let me give you an example. I will go through and I will get a Chef salad. Now, fortunately, most of these restaurants now use a good quality salad mix. It's not just a bunch of iceberg lettuce. It's a spring mix or some romaine lettuce. So I will get a salad. Now, the problem is for me, being male, I want six to eight ounces of protein, and typically they use four ounces of protein. So I will t uh, usually say, hey, may I please have double the meat? So that'll bring me up to my six to eight ounces of meat. So that's covered. Obviously, vegetables is my salad. Now we get to the carbohydrate, right? My fist size carbohydrate. That could be the croutons on the salad, okay? Say I want the french fries. I would get a small fry, eat roughly the equivalent of my fist size, right? Did I ruin my entire diet for the month? No. Did I get to have some french fries and maybe squash a craving? I did, okay? So that's how I do it. Now, if I chose the fries, then that is my one carbohydrate. I'm not doing the um, sugary sodas or the croutons or anything like that. The fry was my choice. If I wanted the croutons, then there's no fries. And I want real dressing. I don't want this fat-free garbage, right? It's inundated with a bunch of chemicals. The body doesn't even know what to do with. I want real stuff, guys. You put the dressings, the condiments, you know, the ketchups, the barbecue sauce, whatever, on the side and you lightly dip into it, okay? So again, if I was female, then my portions would be smaller. I would eat roughly four ounces. Six ounces max, but roughly four ounces. Vegetables again. I would eat to my heart's content on the veggies. And then I would have my fist size carbohydrate, okay? My fist would be smaller, so my portion would be smaller. Now, if I was ketoing, which we're gonna get into some future videos, it would still look similar to this, except obviously the carbohydrate would be gone and we re it would be replaced with something else. And I will get into that in the future videos. But I just wanted to show you guys a simple, easy lunch. Didn't ask you to count any calories, right? It's a map. And what I do is I'll pre typically pre-cook um, a lot of the meat for the week because that's what takes the longest. And I will slightly undercook it so when I do microwave it a few days later, it's still juicy. It's not like I'm eating a hockey puck, okay? I like the, the Green Giant steamer bags for my veggies. 
veggies. Uh, when I am uh, doing carbohydrates, I might have, I have like a, I'm sorry, microwave a sweet potato or do some quality brown rice, uh, some, some type of uh, uh, whole wheat pasta, that sort of thing. Uh, but I always, always, always control my carbohydrate portion as far as the amount that I'm allowed to eat, okay? But that is lunch. We're going to get into your afternoon snacks next. Okay, guys, here is my suggestion for an afternoon snack. Now, depending on, this, this part's critical, my suggestion here, depending on how late dinner is, okay? So if you are a much later eater, meaning if lunch is around noon and dinner is not until seven or eight, just because of, you know, by the time you get home from work and getting everything prepared, then in that instance, I, I'm a believer in possibly two afternoon snacks, okay? So if lunch is around noon, you may have one afternoon snack around three, and then maybe a much smaller snack around five. Again, the reason I suggest that is I've noticed whenever I have to have a late dinner, if I have that little snack around five, it just tends to take the edge off a little bit. And one other trick too is I'll drink between six to eight ounces of water before I have these snacks. It gives me some volume, some fullness, so that when I do have the snack, again, you're never going to eat a snack and go, oh no, I just ruined dinner, I'm so full. That is not what a snack is for. Um, for me, like I said, it just helps keep me honest. And uh, it's just another way to get a little bit more protein into my diet, okay? But as the day is getting later, you'll notice I did kind of take the caloric intake, rather, of the snack a little bit lower. So for men, myself, I typically eat between 200 to 225 calories in one of my snacks. If I was a woman, again, I'd eat between 125 and 150 calories for my snack. Um, and, and pretty much anything goes. I mean, I like... Uh, I'm a big fan of like the unflavored Greek yogurt and I'll put a scoop of uh, like my favorite chocolate uh, whey protein in there and I mix it up. It's almost like a chocolate mousse. That's delicious. Um, there are so many recipes out there. I've made my own little uh, uh, moderately low carb uh, protein balls with peanut butter, um, a couple of some dried light on the dried oats and some sugar free chocolate chips, that sort of thing. That's a possibility. Uh, I, I like sometimes if I'm just lazy, I'll buy a vegetable tray, leave that in the fridge and I'll kind of snack on that. Uh, or sometimes I'll take a good quality lunch meat like a boar's head and maybe some Swiss cheese and make some little roll-ups. Uh, again, these are just some, some, some examples. You got to find what you enjoy and what you like. It could be some rice cakes with peanut butter on them. The big thing is just kind of keep your calories there, but more importantly, I want you to eat. Like I said, I know some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I will take this to my grave. I believe we should be eating a nice big breakfast and we should be eating every couple of hours. Um, I, I've just found throughout all the years of doing this, it seems to work best for me and my clients. Now, again, you've got some other people that we're not all the exact same, and I get that. So you got to find what works for you. I'm just saying, generally, I seem to see the most uh, uh, positive effect for myself and the people I work with when we incorporate more eating. Okay, I mean, how cool is that? You know, I'm telling you to eat and eat often. I don't want you sucking on a raisin and calling that a meal. We're not, you know, I, I really don't want this limited window where this is all you get for the rest of your life because really what that's what it boils down to, guys. Is this something you can do forever? I'm giving you examples of how I want you to eat all day long. I think that's something we can all do. I want to start for the day with a big breakfast. I want to have my snacks every couple of hours. I want to have some structured meals, but I also want to be able to go to a restaurant and not have fear of, oh my gosh, I'm sitting here at a McDonald's, what do I do? You know, I can incorporate these foods. I could be sitting next to the guy eating two filet of fish, a chocolate shake, and an apple pie. We're both in the same restaurant. It was choices. I chose to fit into my schedule. Okay, and that's what I'm just hoping to get across as I do these videos, okay? Um, it's choices, and that's what it boils down to. So again, this would be your afternoon snack, and if you do eat dinner later, there is nothing wrong with throwing in a much smaller snack. Um, and, and for me, usually, if I do throw in that second snack, I lean more towards something in the nut family. It could be some walnuts, macadamia nuts, some pecans. But again, nuts are very calorically dense, so you got to be careful with how many you eat. Um, so I, I definitely measure them out just to make sure I don't overdo them. But again, I like to also have a good six to eight ounce glass of water before uh, I do my snack. And it just seems to really take the edge off. All right, thank you, and we'll get to dinner now. Okay, guys, now we get to dinner, one of my favorite meals. Um, obviously, we're getting later into the day, and so we want to be, I always tell people, if you're going to butcher a meal, I would try to screw it up a little bit earlier in the day. We're running out of time to kind of burn off our mistakes, okay? So you'll, you'll notice dinner and lunch are almost identical, okay? So again, as a male, I recommend for myself and 
but says a general recommendation, again, six to eight ounces of, of meat. If I'm really trying to get aggressive with my body fat loss, uh, I, I, my go-to is more fish, all right? That seems to really just stimulate and work better for me as far as uh, stimulating my, my, my body fat loss. But again, I want six to eight ounces of meat, preferably baked, you could air fry, uh, broil, okay, uh, grill out from time to time, but again, roughly six to eight ounces of meat. Uh, again, your minimum of two cups of vegetables, you can have a thousand cups of veggies. Again, I'm not gonna say you're eating too many. And here's where it diff does differ from lunch, okay? You'll notice half the size of your fist in a carbohydrate, right? Half the size. So you got your full portion at lunch, we're doing half the size now at dinner. The other little trick with the carbohydrate, eat it at the end of the meal. Think about it, after you've eaten your six to eight ounces of protein, if you're male, you fill it up on your veggies. By the time you get to the carbohydrate, you're starting to get full, right? So it's gonna be easier to control the amount of carbohydrate. What we're really doing is controlling the amount of insulin release. And again, I don't wanna to get too ahead in this video. I just wanted to basically build the framework here. Um, but you'll notice, even this, this is a little bit of a lower carbohydrate eating program, okay? Uh, we, we're, we're not getting rid of them completely, but we are kind of controlling the portion size for our carbohydrate, and more importantly, we're controlling the portion size as the day progresses on, okay? So again, if I was female, my portion size of meat would be roughly four ounces of meat, okay? I'd still keep my minimum two cups of vegetables, okay? And again, my fist would be smaller, so my naturally, my carbohydrate portion would be smaller, and again, I would eat it at the end of the meal. All right, so what I've done is I've mapped out a basic eating plan, uh, structure if you will, for breakfast, a morning snack, a lunch, one to possibly two afternoon snacks, and dinner. Now, where there may be some variation is when I work out. All right, so sometimes my schedule might be off just, you know, adjusted slightly to where um, after I'm done working out, that's why I like to incorporate my protein shake. So if I work out a little later in the day, I'll move my afternoon snack to morning, and then the protein shake I was gonna have in the morning, I moved after my workout. So again, this is, it kind of ebbs and flows like water. You know, you can't just be the structured, rigid, it's this way or no way, because life doesn't go that way. What I try to do though, is I make sure that I am eating when I'm supposed to eat, or as close to when I'm supposed to eat as possible. And then one of my big tricks is this. If I know, for example, I'm gonna be going to the zoo, I'm gonna take my kids with me, and, and you know we're deciding, you know, we're gonna be gone for five, six hours. Well, what I do is I already know, because I've got this memorized, I already know roughly during that window what snacks and or meals could be possibly affected. So I don't use the excuse, I, I'm away from home for the day, so I don't have any snacks, I bring with me what I know I will need. So if I'm gonna miss my morning snack, my lunch, and my afternoon snack, I will bring my snacks with me, right? My morning and my afternoon snack could be a protein shake, some almonds, some jerky, maybe a protein bar. And then for lunch, I've got options. I can either make maybe a deli sandwich uh, and, and bring some, some, some vegetables in a baggie, or what I will do is I'll get online and I'll see what restaurants they have. So then I will kind of look at their menu and I will see if one of those menu or one of those restaurants rather, I could find something on the menu that's going to be very close to this. And honestly, I always can. I've yet to be able to do that. I can go to any restaurant and make this work, which is what I absolutely love about this. Okay. So again, I didn't use the excuse. I was away from home, so I'm not prepared. I instead prepared for not being home by bringing the snacks and the meals that I needed. One last thing I want to discuss is the cheat meal. I love the cheat meal. Some people, oh, the cheat meal. Cheat meal, in my opinion, is, is very important. Number one, it helps us keep our sanity. I love terrible food. I'll be the first to admit it. I do. It's the only advice I have. I don't drink, don't smoke, don't party, none of that stuff. But I love crab rangoon and cannolis and chocolate cake and donuts. Do I know they're bad for me? Of course I do. Do I enjoy them? Yes, I do, right? The trick is I earn them. I ate well all throughout the week. So come Friday or Saturday night when it's my cheat meal, not the whole day, uh, I will incorporate that meal and I look forward to it. We turn into a game as we're eating, we try and decide what are we gonna cheat on next week? Is it gonna be some, uh, some pizzas? Is it gonna be some greasy burgers or whatever? So in my opinion, it kind of keeps us honest because if you try and get rid of everything that you enjoy for the rest of your life, good luck with that because you're gonna fail. If you try and get rid of it forever, you can't. Okay, I don't care how strong will jar. So to me, it's that nice little release, all right? More importantly, uh, I firmly believe it keeps your body from getting used to the diet. Guys, if you eat the same way all the time, the body will get used to it, right? So to me, it's, it's interesting, but after I have a cheat meal, the next day I'm always gonna be up a few pounds. Why? Water weight, that's all it is. Uh, 
But what's interesting is within a day or two, that water weight is gone. So my weight returns back to where it was. But then also a few days after that, I've noticed it kind of sparks a little bit more weight loss. Um, it, it's always worked. It, is, it has always helped me. So to me, I think the cheat meal does serve a, a very, very important purpose in the grand scheme of things. Now, that being said, say it's a Tuesday, my cheat meal is supposed to be on a Friday, and say I do a terrible Tuesday. Well, then I lost that cheat meal for that Friday, and I wait until the following week. That's kind of the, the game I play uh, to keep me honest and uh, just, just kind of stay the course, guys. But always remember this. Remember how I showed you the, 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 the snacks and lunch and the dinners and stuff like that? Just remember this. This is the best advice I will give you. You're going to fall down sometimes. You're going to fall down at any one of these meals or any one of these snacks. Say you screw up at your mid-morning snack. Well, guess what? Two to three hours is lunch. You get to start over again. Say you screw up that meal. Fine. The afternoon snack comes rolling around. Pick up where you left off. Dinner rolls around. You're terrible. Great. Go to bed knowing you get to start again at breakfast. If you think this through for a minute, how do you fail at this? You don't, right? You, you, you don't. If you eat six times a day and there's seven days a week, that's 42 times that you ate one of these meals. Even if you screw up six times, you ate well 36 times. I like those numbers, right? That's really what it really boils down to. It's not about being flawless. And again, you guys, this isn't for contest prep. You know, obviously when I'm prepping for a show or something, I, I, mean, I am nails and I'm even a lot more specific than what I showed you. But I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. That type of dieting is brutal and I hate it. Maybe that's why I haven't done a show in seven years. It's just not fun. And to be honest with you, that's not how I wanna eat for the rest of my life. And that wasn't the whole premise behind this channel. The reason I developed this channel is I felt like there's just so much information out there and nobody knows where to turn. And, and you start with one modality and all of a sudden somebody else is coming on saying, no, no, that's, you don't want to eat that way. Research shows, you know, I can conduct, you know, to me, research studies serve a purpose, but let's be honest, you know, half the time they tell us they vilified eggs, now eggs are fine, they vilified butter, now butter's fine. Who do we trust, right? What it boils down to is just balance. You know, buy your own food, prepare as much as you can, try and stay away from a lot of processed foods, um, and then pick up where you made your mistakes. And as long as you do that, you're going to have a long, hopefully, long, healthy life ahead of you. Um, again, I always tell my clients, you know, eating better isn't going to make sure you never get cancers or anything like that, but I strongly believe we are what we put into our bodies, and I think we give our immune system and our health a fighting chance when we're better eaters. Again, I don't have any statistics or anything like that, um, but I just, it, it just makes common sense. If I'm eating better, chances are I'm going to have a better quality of life. So anyway, in future videos, we're going to take this template that, I, that I've kind of showed you, and now we're going to start to fine tune this if you wanted more of a ketogenic lifestyle. How would you eat this way? Or say you want more of a plant-based lifestyle, and you don't want to eat all this meat. How do I eat? What do I do? So in future videos, I'm going to show you how to, still following the same kind of protocol, um, just manipulating the food and the macro choices, how you can make it fit into your lifestyle. One last thing, hydration, water, critical. What they say is you take your body weight, you cut it in half. That is the minimum number of ounces of water you want to try to consume every day. All right? That's minimum. And if you exercise a lot, you sweat a lot, you need even more water. I would say that is one of the most critical things. Most people don't hydrate enough. So again, I would really try to focus and make sure you're at least hitting those hydration levels. All right. Be blessed, everyone, and looking forward to the next video. Bye-bye.